is the I Beg to Differ Debate Tournament of Champions. Good to see you. Happy holidays. I do hope that you and yours are having a fantastic holiday. Over the five, the past five weeks, the 12 best secondary school debaters from the past two years have been battling it out to claim the ultimate title, Champion of Champions. We brought back past champions, runners-up, and the most impressive non-finalists from the first four editions. And now, only two debaters are left standing. And in the next few hours, we will debate and we will find out who will be our one winner to million naira a big thank you to all our sponsors and partners who have made i beg to differ happen paystack is our headline sponsor paystack helps businesses accept online and offline payments from local and international customers paystack also has a pos called terminal terminal lets customers pay you in person by card bank transfers and ussd terminal can split your payment into multiple accounts and send you real-time alerts on your phone go to paystack.com com forward slash back to differ to get the terminal pos for your business again it is paystack.com forward slash back to differ now of course if you have a business you're looking for some insurance that's why our associate sponsor is sunu assurances sunu assurances says you pick your way we take your risk they provide motor insurance marine insurance fire insurance, house owner and householder insurance, and so much more. For more information, visit their website on www.sunoassurancesnigeria.com www.sunoassurancesnigeria.com or check out their social media handles at Suno Assurances on Instagram and Facebook. Suno Assurances on Instagram and Facebook. Now we've got support from obiwizi.com. Obiwizi.com has made sure that all our debaters get prizes. We've got 12 uh, smart watches that uh, all the debaters received as soon as the group stage matches began. But whoever is declared champion of champions today will go home with an HP laptop, will go home with a stand for that laptop, will also go home with ear pods. And we also have gifts for who comes second. A Nintendo Switch has their name on it. They'll also be going home with ear pods. Now, the, among the debaters who uh, lost to our finalists today, someone scored the highest. We're also going to take a look at those scores and we will be sending a JBL speaker to the third place finisher as well as AirPods. Now we have support from RLG Communications. RLG gave tablets to every quarter finalist in the Tournament of Champions. So our two finalists today received tablets from RLG Communications. I believe they also received tablets the last two times or three times. So Well, two times. Well, last time actually. It was one time. <laughs> the last time that they were here for Nigeria Info's I Beg to Differ Debate Tournament. This time we got support as well from Stova Industries Limited. Stova's Industries, uh, Stova Industries Limited are the makers of Swiss Flower Air Freshener and Swiss Beauty and Body Care. Stova Industries are located at 1719 Oshukwe Plaza, Allen Avenue, Ikeja, Lagos. And then, of course, there's support from Just Delight Non Dairy Ice Cream. Just Delight is Nigeria's plant based ice cream. Uh, Just Delight says that this is suitable for people who are lactose intolerant. And this ice cream is available at all. All major supermarkets and stores nationwide or you can just order it online order it on www.justfood.ng uh, oh and by the way just the light will uh, give out free ice cream at the school of whoever is declared champion of champions today so our finalists have one more thing to play for incidentally our finalists have both graduated secondary school however because they went to that school, they get to be the source of goodies for the students of that school. I love it. I wish I were a student of that school. <laughs> now, Lagos, before I introduce the contestants, let me introduce the panel of judges. My first judge uh, is the voice of the news here on Nigeria Info FM. She is always with us at the finals. Judge Vaughn or Haifo, welcome to the Tournament of Champions. 
Thank you, Sandra. It's good to be back. Mm. Our second judge is joining us virtually from Canada. She's a legal practitioner, Adenika Robon Law. Our third judge is joining us virtually as well from South Africa, Ronald Asiebu. Uh, Ronald Asiebu is an accountant there. And our fourth judge is a product manager here in Lagos. He is our chief judge as well because he's a real-life chief. Chief Andy Oboforobo, good to have you here with us. Welcome to the final of the Tournament of Champions. Always great to be here. Hmm. Lagos, let me remind you, of course, that you can watch this live on Facebook. Nigeria Info 99.3, that's for Facebook. Nigeria Info FM, that's for YouTube. Now that you've met the sponsors and you've met the judges, let's debate. Here is our first debater. She was the match, the champion of the March 2022 edition of the of I Beg to Differ. Her career I Beg to Differ record is seven wins and two losses. She is the only debater to compete in three different I Beg to Differ tournaments. So she's an institution here. In her first group stage match, she argued that schools should let students use AI like ChatGPT to write essays. In her second group stage match, she argued that traditional rulers have not outlived their purpose. In her quarterfinals, she debated that sports and politics should be kept separate on the global stage. And in last Tuesday's semi-final, she argued that insurance is not a viable product for developing countries. Ruth Okorocha, welcome to the final of the I Beg to Differ Tournament of Champions. Good to see you. Our second debater is also from the March 2022 edition, where he placed third. His career, I beg to differ, record is seven wins and one loss. Here at the Tournament of Champions, he argued that schools should not let students use AI like ChatGPT to write essays in his first group stage match. In his second group stage match, he told us that voting should be mandatory. In his quarterfinal, he debated against employers considering a job applicant's social media activity. And in last Monday's semi-final, he argued that religious leaders and institutions should stay out of politics. Ramadan Olalekon Oladikupo, welcome to the I Beg to Differ Tournament of Champions. Are you okay? Are you doing okay? Are you sure? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Good to see both of you and welcome. <laughs> Lagos, the contestants have been told the rules, but here they are again. I will give you two topics which you will debate one after the other. Whichever of you supports the first motion will oppose the second motion and vice versa. For each topic, there will be three rounds, presentation, rebuttal, and closing. You will each get three minutes for each round. First, three minutes to present your positions, and then you'll each get another three minutes in the rebuttal round. And then you'll get another three minutes to close. And then you'll do it all over again for your second topic. Our panel of judges will score you based on number, quality, and originality of unique points made. If you repeat a point, your score will not increase. Clarity of thought and eloquence of presentation 
number of opponent's points addressed during rebuttals, the strength of your rebuttal of each point. Very important if you want to walk away today with 2 million naira. Now, of course, uh, Lagos, let me remind you that we're streaming live on Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3, uh, YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. Each judge will add up the points that they've given you at the end of the debates and cast a single vote for the winner or half a vote for each of you. If you are tied on their scorecards, if you end up tied on uh, a judge's votes, if, or if two of you end up tied on judge's votes, then your total scores will be added up to determine the winner. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay. Now you know your topics. People whose data and work is used to train AI like DALL-E or ChatGPT should have some ownership rights over the art or insights it generates. Your second topic, China is a better partner for Africa than the West. How did you feel when you saw these topics? Ruth, I'll go with you first and I'll come to Ramadan. When you, when you, you were like, chat GPT again. And it was both of you for chat GPT the first time. Ramadan, what did you think? Yeah, exactly same, same thing. Same. We were like, oh. <laughs> but I mean, is the fact that you've done it before uh, a plus or a minus? Yeah, there are two different sides. So yeah. It's not, it's not the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What did you think about the second topic, Ramadan? The second topic is perfect. It's perfect? It's perfect. Okay. <laughs> All right. How, how about you? You, you love the second topic. But first one is like, why? Blame Chief for that. He, Chief is in tech. He's the one that suggested <laughs> it. <laughs> Okay, now let's decide which of these topics we'll take first, uh, and then we'll decide who supports and who opposes. Both of you will help me choose how the debate will go. Mm? With two coin tosses, we're going to toss the coin twice. Now, Ramadan, on the first toss, you will call heads or tails. If it lands on the side that you call, we're going to debate AI first. If it lands on the other side, we're going to debate China first. Which one are you hoping it lands on? China. China? <laughs> <laughs> okay. After that, Ruth, you're going to do the second toss. If it lands on the side you called, you will support the first motion. So uh, whatever the f first motion is, you'll support it. If it lands on the other side, you will oppose the motion. Hmm? The, the rules are clear, B. And rules clear? Okay. All right. Now, of course, regardless of which side it falls on, both of you will switch sides sides for the second topic are we ready okay ramadan let's pick which order mm? so it's in your hand though whether it's china <laughs> or ai eh? call it tails 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 it is oh all right then <laughs> oh okay now let's pick who supports and who opposes china and uh, africa mm? oh no, no no sorry who uh, supports uh, ai it's ai yeah, first AI. yeah sorry oh <laughs> i'm sorry okay call it ruth heads tails it is okay which means that uh, ruth will be and uh, ramadan will be all right, so Ramadan supports that people whose data and work is used to train AI like Dal E or Chad GPT should have some ownership rights over the art or insights it generates. And Ruth will oppose, right? That uh, people whose data and work is used to train AI like Dal E and Chad GPT should have some ownership rights over the art or insights it generates. We'll take a break. When we come back from this break, it'll be time for round one, the presentation round. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili Lagos, and I'm the moderator of Nigeria Info FM's I Beg to Differ debate tournament. Champion, it's a title that can only be earned, never given. It's a title that everyone wants, but only the best can claim. It's a title that Ramadan or Lalekon or Larikupo's fans believe he was denied. Ramadan, your road to one million naira ends here, but you are still in the competition. But there are no should haves or could haves in the record books. Only wins, losses, and chances at redemption. He gets that chance on Monday. One more win to remove the Peoples from his nickname, People's Champion. Ruth.
Ruth Okorocha is a champion. Ruth Okorocha. Congratulations, Ruth, and well done. When her time came, she finished the job. And while every other champion has fallen, she stands one win away from a title with no other holders ever. Champion of champions. It's the final of the I Beg to Defer Tournament of Champions. I disagree with that by saying we've seen a lot of religious leaders who turned out to be morally debased. But how does this affect when there are not enough policies in place for these drama markets to grow? Five tournaments over two years have all come down to this. Monday. My name is Ruth Okorocha. One winner. I'm a but I'm a One winner. Two million naira. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, your moderator. Join us as we crown our champion of champions. Will Ramadan rewrite history? Or will Ruth Okorocha repeat it? Find out Monday at 3 p.m. on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Stream the debate live on www.nigeriainfo.fm. This tournament is brought to you by Paystack in association with Sunu Assurances. Supported by RLG Communications, Obiwisi.com, Just Like non Ice Cream, Stover Industries, and Wazobia Max TV. And it's now time for round one, the presentation round. Let's start with the motion supporter. The first topic, of course, is that... Uh, um, people whose data and work is used to train AI, like DAL-E or ChatGPT, should have some ownership rights over the art or insights it, it generates. Your three minutes start now. Mojita and Majidicators, good day. We have a question. People whose works and insights are used to train AI models, should they be granted ownership rights over its insights? Well, I'm affirmative, and here are my reasons. Firstly, authorship violation. Using the insights generated from an AI model that was trained on the works that another individual might have committed thousands of hours to recreating without giving them some level of oversight is a violation of their authorship. Ownership rights, however, would give these people an increased level of control which they logically deserve. Secondly, power imbalance. Cooperation to create these AI models are making waste from the insights it generates and most of the times the original data creators are left in the dark ownership rights however would help to shift that power imbalance from the corporations back to the original data creators who quite logically deserve this thirdly it fosters the inclusion of quote-unquote underground geniuses currently the ai industry is dominated by large corporations who leech off the works and ideas of thousands of unrecognized individuals ownership rights however would ensure an individual promotion of these thousands of great minds and foster inclusion and this ties into my next point on greater recognition that individual promotion that ownership grants an individual will lead to a greater recognition of their personal brand that would otherwise have been gobbled up by these AI startups. Swiftly, there's no compensation, there's no recognition and consequently, there's no motivation for people to contribute their works to the development of AI. Ownership rights, however, comes with a lot of benefits and these attract more individuals into the AI space, improving their data sets and ultimately making them better. Sixthly, it's sad, but it's true. AI could potentially displace a lot of artists and writers and this will reduce the amount of income they make. Ownership rights, however, would give these people an opportunity to charge royalties and this sort of nullifies the problem that AI has created in the first place. Seven, healthy competition. That individual co um, recognition that I suggested earlier that ownership rights grants an individual would incite everybody to put out their, get their best work so they could get the greatest recognition. And this fosters a feeling of healthy competition which is beneficial for any industry. Furthermore, and this is beneficial for any industry. Furthermore, ethical concerns could arise if the insights generated from an AI model are misused by the end users. Ownership rights, however, would give the original data creators a legal basis to object and prevent such usage, avoiding an outburst of ethical concerns. 9. Open AI alone. The founders of ChatGPT have an estimated worth of wait for it. 13.5 trillion naira. It's outrageous. And it's point blank unreasonable for these corporations to fill their bags with the profits from these markets and leave the original data creators who are their backbones under the rug. Ownership rights will checkmate this issue as it ensures a fair distribution of the insights generated from an AI model. Furthermore, increase accountability. By granting ownership rights, we have given you full control over how your data is used. And this makes you responsible for any results in issues that may arise and gives us an accountable figure that we can hold responsible if anything goes wrong. Furthermore, increased flexibility is synonymous to ownership rights. And this gives smaller organizations an entry level to the AI industry and allows them to share their works with other AI developers, which will be beneficial to the growth of the AI industry as a whole. F lastly, intellectual property disputes concerns 
concerns about privacy and consent, potential misuse and exploitation. These are just a glimpse of the potential problems that ownership rights could solve. And this isn't just a speculation as has happened in the movie industry to big names like Universal Studios and Sony Pictures. Majority and majoricators, the wise is danger and conceals himself. Let us be wise and grant ownership rights to whom is you. Thank you. Ramadan Olaleko Oladi Kupal with his opening round. People whose data and work is used to train AI like Dal E or Chat GPT should have some ownership rights over the art or insights it generates. All right. Let's come to his opponent, Ruth Okorocha. Ruth, you've got three minutes to tell us no, that's not the way. Good afternoon, moderator, adjudicators, my opponents, attentive listeners and viewers. I'm Rosa Korocha, negating the resolution. People's work and data are used in training AI like Chad GPT and Dali should have some form of ownership rights over the arts and insights that it generates. The first point is people think that when you place a prompt on AI, it just goes straight. For example, a moon in a teacup and place that type of insight to generate a, a content on Dali. It goes straight to the, uh, the training data and then picks up related images and pixels and then generates content. But in reality, this generates content comes from the latent space of the deep training model of this. So it's not coming directly from the training data. So why should you give ownership rights to people whose work and data by using training these models? Secondly, is that there are lots of debates and arguments about what about who do should, should divide this ownership rights among. Some people say we should give it to the AI models. Some say we should give it to people that created the AI models. Some say the user themselves. And these are all credible considerations. But the least credible are the people whose work and data who are using training this model. Sadly, is that there are lots of millions of billions of data that are put into generating this content and generate, making the training data available. Now, let's say for example, one generated content or generated art piece on DALI. Thousands of data have been put into generating accounts. How are you going to possibly split ownership rights for one content among different creators? And that thing is that people who put this work available on the net, they know that people are going to reproduce it. For example, I could go on the net and pick up the style of a writer and then get inspired by the art of another artist and then generate my own content. I don't give them any form of ownership rights. So when Ch Charge BT and DALI or any other AI is doing something similar, why should we be talking about ownership rights? And that thing is that we know that not all art and not all works that are generated by Charge BT, DALI or any other AI is cogent and credible. What if it generates content that is not or does not make sense? Would they still want to associate it with their work or data and say, okay, yes, it was my work or data that was put into the train? This answer is no. If these double standards are going to exist, then don't give them any form of ownership rights. And that thing is right I only talked about when it's violating law. There is no law of any country that says when you use the work or data of people without actually asking them for it, when it's out there on the net, it violates their fundamental human rights. No. So it's not unlawful and shouldn't give them any ownership rights for it. And that thing is that people think that this train data are the most important level or the most important thing in generating content. But they also re reinforcement learning. There's also supervised learning. It also has to emulate relations between neurons in the brain. In the brain, there's also image recognition. All these things are very cogent and more important than the so-called training data that are used and put in place into the um, train to gem training these AI models. And lastly, is that when when AI was when AI was first made, it was made known that they would take content from the net to train these models. So people who put their work out, they know that going to be used to train an AI model. If you don't want your work to be used to train an AI model, then keep it physical. No one is going to penalize you for that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruth Okoracha, and well done. <laughs> oh my. Lagos, let me remind you, we're streaming live. Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3, YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. It's such a pleasure for me to hear Ruth say right now that sometimes the AI doesn't make uh, uh, cogent <laughs> points while remembering that this is someone that supported ChatGPT during her group stage match and she told us ChatGPT was the best thing after sliced bread. I love debate. I really love debate. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back from this break, it will be time <laughs> for rebuttals. After rebuttals, we'll go straight to closing. This is still the first topic. We have the second one to get to. Now, of course, right now, they're debating that people's who, people whose data and work is used to train AI should have ownership rights over that AI. I'm Sandra Isakwesli, your moderator. Champion. It's a title that can only be earned, never given. It's a title that everyone wants, but only the best can claim. It's a title that Ramadan or Lalekon or Larikupo's fans believe he was denied. Ramadan, your road to one million naira ends here, but you are still in the competition. But there are no should haves or could haves in the record books. Only wins, losses, and chances at redemption. 
he gets that chance on Monday. One more win to remove the Peoples from his nickname, Peoples Champion. Ruth Okorocha is a champion. Ruth Okorocha. Congratulations, Ruth, and well done. When her time came, she finished the job. And while every other champion has fallen, she stands one win away from a title with no other holders ever. Champion of champions. It's the final of the I beg to defer tournament of champions. I disagree with that by saying we've seen a lot of religious leaders who turned out to be morally debased. But how does this affect when there are not enough policies in place for these drama markets to grow? Five tournaments over two years have all come down to this. Monday. My name is Ruth Okorocha. One winner. I'm a dad, I'm a dad, I'm a dad. One winner, two million naira. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, your moderator. Join us as we crown our champion of champions. Will Ramadan rewrite history? Or will Ruth Okorocha repeat it? Find out Monday at 3 p.m. on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Stream the debate live on www.nigeriainfo.fm. This tournament is brought to you by Paystack in association with Sunu Assurances. Supported by RLG Communications, Obiwisi.com, Just Like non Ice Cream, Stover Industries and Wazobia Max TV. Sincerely, I don't want to wait till I graduate from this school before I think of what to do with my life. Exactly. I am going to seriously work on my music skills. Let me use my talent well I big. I would like to be a radio presenter, but I don't know how to go about it. But why is Sunu so quiet today? Sorry, ladies. I'm taking this eclectic course on how to become a professional scriptwriter. See if you can also learn how to become a radio presenter on Wazobia Academy. Wazobia Academy? Yes. Wazobia Academy provides accessible and affordable online training in filmmaking, music business, fashion, radio hosting, and lots more. You also stand a chance to be selected for internships in leading production companies, radio stations, music, and fashion studios for hands-on experience. It's easy. Simply log on to www.wazobiaacademy.com or call 09. 8-826-5038 for more details. For Zobia Academy, learn and lead. Champion. It's a title that can only be earned, never given. It's a title that everyone wants, but only the best can claim. It's a title that Ramadan or Lalekon or Larikupo's fans believe he was denied. Ramadan, your road to one million naira ends here. But we are still in the competition. But there are no should haves or could haves in the record books. Only wins, losses, and chances at redemption. He gets that chance on Monday. One more win to remove the Peoples from his nickname, Peoples Champion. Ruth Okorocha is a champion. Ruth. Okorocha. Congratulations, Ruth, and well done. When her time came, she finished the job. And while every other champion has fallen, she stands one win away from a title with no other holders ever. Champion of champions. It's the final of the I beg to defer tournament of champions. I disagree with that by saying we've seen a lot of religious leaders who turned out to be morally debased. But how does this affect when there are not enough policies in place for these drama markets to grow? Five tournaments over two years have all come down to this. Monday. My name is Ruth Okorocha. One winner. I'm a dad, but I'm a dad, I'm a dad. One winner, two million naira. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, your moderator. Join us as we crown our champion of champions. Will Ramadan rewrite history? Or will Ruth Okorocha repeat it? Find out Monday at 3 p.m. on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Stream the debate live on www.nigeriainfo.fm. This tournament is brought to you by Paystack in association with Sunu Assurances. Supported by RLG Communications, Obiwisi.com, Just Like non Ice Cream, Stover Industries, and Wazobia Max TV. 
I'm Sandra Ezekwesli, your moderator, and we are back. It is now time for round two rebuttals. We'll start with the motion opposer, Ruth Okorocha. Three minutes starts now. Thank you very much. In your first point, you mentioned authorship violation. Well, AI is, is the author of the content that it generates because these people, the content that it generates is actually something different from the original training. The training data is just like, okay, you go to school and you learn and your teacher teaches you with like examples and then you have to create your own. That's what AI does when it's learning from these training data. And you also mentioned power imbalance where original data creators, you said original data creators are left in the dark. But sometimes you also give credit. For example, it's my mention William Shakespeare and my mention some other artists that actually exist. And then you, can, you want to go check these artists out so they giving them more power and it's, there is no form of power imbalance there then you also mentioned that it leads some people to underground their works are kept underground and so where this is related to your first point the same rebuttal then number four you said ownership recognition how is it possible to actually trace ownership of already genetic content to the people whose work and data were used in training these models because there are lots of data that put into training these models millions and billions of them so how possible is it to trace them back and also you said compensation they deserve compensation and motivation well when some people sometimes when they upload on the net for example let me say um, a work of art or where you upload it on the net, you actually get money for this. You have get money for that's the money that they deserve for their original work and not work that's already be processed, be processed by AI. And some other people that write on the net, for example, Amazon and so on, they actually get paid for it. That's the compensation that they deserve. And you said AI could displace a lot of artists and so on. But they also people who seek original content and not AI generated content. Not everybody wants AI generated content. Some people still want the original content so it doesn't displace them. The two of them can exist side by side. And you said it's great healthy competition among the people who actually whose work and data are used to training these models. Well, if you're, if you're not giving ownership rights, then you would want your work and data to be better than the ones that people are generating from AI. And it creates more healthier competition because why are you trying to be better than AI? Because it's not possible. You yourself are becoming more developed and creative. Then you also mentioned ethical concerns and so on. If the data that is being used to train these models are from these people and the kind of data they are putting on the net has ethical concerns, then it's an issue in itself. And being, it is being, it's not AI that generates the ethical concerns or biased content. It's this work that was collected from these people. So I give them ownership rights. I mean, they also have ownership rights over the bias content that they themselves created. And then you also say the estimated words of open AI and so on. Well, if you want money, you can work for your money or go work for AI, not put AI into their money. And then you mentioned um, in, um, in, in, increase in accountability and so on. It doesn't make anybody accountable. It only creates more complex situations. And then you said uh, smaller organizations, the entry level or so on, organization that, um, for example, creates AI models. If you are expecting smaller organizations to be given ownership rights to the work and data that are used in training their AI model, then it's going to make them not able to grow bigger as the big AI, as, um, uh, AI model training companies. And then lastly, you mentioned um, the issue of privacy. It's not been confirmed yet that AI uses private data of people into training their models. So you don't say that it's actually takes privacy of people. It's content that are posted on the net that people make available for the public to see. It's not confirmed that they make use of private charts of people and so on to train their models. That was all the points you made. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ruth Okorocha and well done. Ruth, you're going to need to move closer to your mic or move your mic up. We have a few complaints that people cannot hear you. Our judges can hear you, so it's fine. But uh, I would love for the audience to be able to hear you clearly. Remember, Dan, you've got three minutes for your second round. It starts now. Okay, firstly, my opponent tried to suggest that the insights generated from an AI model are not necessarily as a result of the data it was trained on, but I do not agree with that in any way, because if you look at the way an AI model is trained, it is fed on a huge amount of data, and it tries to repurpose that data. That doesn't mean that it did not, it, without that huge data set, it can't repurpose anything. So it's only repurposing because that first data was there during the training process. So the insights generated are not from the AI model. The AI model doesn't have any intellectual property. The intellectual intellectual property of other individuals are what are used to train these AI models. So your first rebuttal is illogical. The second rebuttal you tried to make was who should get this ownership rights that different people contribute to the growth of the AI and the least credible are the data creators. What do you mean? The most credible people for this ownership rights are the data creators because they are the most fundamental backbone to the growth of any AI model. I mean, you could get somebody pouring in $500 trillion, which is unrealistic, into the growth of an AI model. But without the utility of the AI model, it's basically useless. And that utility comes from the fact that you have trained this AI model on the data sets that another individual has contributed. So they are the most credible if we are speaking about credibility here. Another point you made was we don't necessarily use the insights generated from an AI, so why should we give them ownership rights?
insight. I am not saying we should grant ownership rights to people that are not using the insight. I mean, if you are not using the insight from an AI, there's no need for the ownership rights. I am only saying if you are using the insights generated from an AI model, you should, um, the AI models rather, should grant ownership rights to the original data creators because that is the only logical thing to do. As they have committed thousands of hours to working and then you use their works to train an AI model and you are saying we shouldn't give them ownership rights. Another um, point you tried to make was that works that are not credible will not want to be claimed. I mean, if you used my work to train your AI model, it means it was credible It was credible enough to pass your criteria. So the fact that the insights your AI model is generating it has some little issues is not my fault. I mean, ChatGPT was created less than a year ago and they're already doing phenomenally well. They just have a little issues of inaccuracy and this is a problem of the AI model, if any, and not the problem of the people whose work size to train the AI model. If you feel my work is not credible enough to train your AI model, then you can as well bypass it. Another point you tried to make was that there's no law that states it's a violation of human rights. I never said it was a violation of human rights. I only stated logical reasons why we should allow why we should tell AI, um, the AI corporations to grant ownership rights to the people whose works are used to train AI models. Another thing you tried to say was the training data is not the most important part of the AI training process. I have addressed it before and I will still address it again. Like I have said earlier, without those data sets, the AI is basically useless. It doesn't matter the amount of money that is pumped into it. It doesn't matter the caliber of tech that you use to create it. Without the utility, it is useless. And the utility is only fundamental on the data that it was trained on. Another point you tried to make is that they know the their works could, would be used to train AI models, so they should not benefit because they know it will be used to train AI models for free. I mean, the more people who train an AI model, the better it will be. The more people who contribute to your data set, the better it will be. So by saying that people who don't want to contribute their works for free should stay away from the AI um, industry is only hampering the future utility of AI models. Another point I'll try to make now after addressing all, after making rebuttals to earlier points is the fact of technological education. I mean, for this ownership rights to work, we need to set up regulatory frameworks. Thank you, Ramadan, and well done. Great work. <laughs> All right, we'll take a very short break, Lagos. When we come back from this break, it will be time for closing. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. You're listening to the final of Nigeria Info's I Beg to Differ Debate Tournament for Champions. And you have here in the studio with me, Ruth Okoracha, facing Ramadan Olaleko Oladik Pupo. Ruth is a champion from March 2022, and Ramadan came third in that particular edition from March 2022. Today they're facing each other to be declared champion of champions. Who will it be? Find out after this break. Champion. It's a title that can only be earned, never given. It's a title that everyone wants, but only the best can claim. It's a title that Ramadan or Lalekon or Larikupo's fans believe he was denied. Ramadan, your road to one million naira ends here, but you are still in the competition. But there are no shoot herbs or cold herbs in the record books. Only wins, losses, and chances at redemption. He gets that chance on Monday. One more win to remove the peoples from his nickname, People's Champion. Ruth Okorocha is a champion. Ruth Okorocha. Congratulations, Ruth, and well done. When her time came, she finished the job. And while every other champion has fallen, she stands one win away from a title with no other holders ever. Champion of champions. It's the final of the I Beg to Defer Tournament of Champions. I disagree with that by saying we've seen a lot of religious leaders who turned out to be morally debated. But how does this affect when there are not enough policies in place for these real markets to grow? Five tournaments over two years have all come down to this. Monday. My name is Ruth Okorocha. One winner. I'm a lady, I'm a lady. One winner, two million naira. 
I'm Sandra Ezekwesilio, moderator. Join us as we crown our champion of champions. Will Ramadan rewrite history or will Ruth Okorocha repeat it? Find out Monday at 3 p.m. on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Stream the debate live on www.nigeriainfo.fm. This tournament is brought to you by Paystack in association with Sunu Assurances. Supported by RLG Communications, Obiwisi.com, Just Like Non-Dairy Ice Cream, Stova Industries, and Wazobia Max TV. All right, it's time for the third round for this topic, the closing round. And we'll start with the motion supporter now. You've got three minutes. So I rebut my first point on authorship violation. He said AI is the author of the data it generates. Now, the point I tried to make was people whose works are used to train AI models, they are the authors of that work that were used to train the AI model. And they should not be granted, they should be granted ownership rights so it doesn't come as a violation of those authorship rights that they have over their own work. So you saying that AI is the author of the data it generates does not address the point I made because the authorship I was talking about was the data that was used to train the AI model, not the data that the AI itself generates. Another point you tried another rebuttal you made was the rebuttal on power imbalance and you said they give credit to prominent contributors like William Shakespeare really William Shakespeare I was only trying to advocate for the rights of the smaller minority groups who are not William Shakespeare and nobody knows them I mean if you know William Sha if you know William Sha I mean, if you are using the um, an AI model you are very likely to know William Shakespeare because I mean um, for you to use an AI model you need to um, possess some level of education and for you to possess some level of education you know William Shakespeare so it gives Credit, um, credit to prominent contributors alone and not the minority groups who have wasted and committed a lot of time into creating their works, then you just give it to the AI model and do not give them any form of any form of rights over the data. You also said my third point was the same as my first point on authorship violation. My first point was authorship violation. My third point was the inclusion of underground geniuses. These are not similar in any way. If you did not hear my point, I would have appreciated if you asked me to repeat and not just jump into an abrupt conclusion that I made the same point. Another point you tried to report was my point on greater recognition and you said you can't give greater recognition because too many people contributed to the growth of the AI. Nobody is saying that you should give recognition to a person who didn't contribute to the growth of the AI. If somebody contributed to the growth of the AI and you know that these insights were used to train the AI on these um, particular region or this particular topic you grant ownership rights to everybody who contributed to the development of that topic and not just any uh, any other person and you are not giving the ownership, the ownership rights to the millions and billions of people who contributed to the growth of the AI as a whole you are talking about region by region another point you made was they don't need compensation because they know their works will be used to train AI models now I have I've addressed this before that compensation serves as a sort of incentive to attract more people into the AI space and this improves their data set and ultimately makes them better so they need it they really do need it another point you try to make was people who want original content will still hire writers and artists but that doesn't change the fact that for those who cannot afford writers and artists that will other otherwise solicited for funds that they could use to afford the human writers and artists will now turn to ai and this still displaces the displaces jobs from writers and artists so that doesn't change the fact that it is a real problem another point you try to make is if you don't have ownership rights you strive to be better for that you strive to be better than the ai this is not logically correct because like i've said earlier if you have ownership rights that individual recognition that it grants an individual would would incite everybody to put out their best work so they could get the greatest recognition and that fosters the feeling of healthy recognition another point you tried to make was the ethical concerns comes from the data set training without any any reasons why this is so however ethical concerns could arise from the use of the insights generated from an ai model another point you tried to make was it doesn't increase accountability once again without stating any logical reasons however those ownership rights give you full responsibility to buy your data and this improves your accountability Thank you very much, Ramadan, and well done. Great work. All right, Ruth. You've got three minutes, and it starts now. Thank you very much. Now, first of all, is the idea of fair use. So there's something there's something they call fair use, and that is what AI does when it takes the work and data of people into training its model. Fair use means that you can make use of any copyright or co without the permission of the copyright owner be in training, in training, research, criticism, and also scholarships. And what's an inclu inclusive training? So what it does when it takes the work and data of people is training. So it's called fair use, and they don't deserve any form of ownership rights. And that's
thing is that AI is a separate entity and whatever it generates, it's its own creation. And, all, and that point to consider is that it also sets limitations for this AI-generated content. Because when you are giving ownership rights to this person and that person, it generates the amount of data that will be imputed more into, into the training data of these AI models. It also reduces the quality of this AI model. And also when you want to, for example, you're giving um, ownership rights to people in different countries. I mean, there's a legal jurisdiction problem and how they interact with each other. It's not going to make it very easy. It's only going to increase our complexities. Another thing to consider is that when an AI generates a content, for example, sometimes it's used to train another AI model. I can to transfer that same rights from the generated content to the that is used to train another AI model. The circle, just, the circle just keeps going round and round and it doesn't make any sense. And on that point, additionally, is that for people that, that have lived and died, for example, and for example, all these great authors that have lived and they're living a legacy and the legacy are being used to train these models. I can to give the entrepreneur to their led to their lineage or probably you will just give it to the people that see your life i'll leave that question for you to answer and then in some attempts to rebut my point you mentioned that um you said i said that we don't use the insta but i never mentioned that and you said it's the data training data for 20 generates bias content when i was trying to say that the data comes from its latent space you said all the data primarily comes from the work and data of those people well if it comes from the work and data, that means any bias content any harsh content is also coming from the work and data that we're using training these models so it's not the ai the ai is not a human being so Anything that is generating is from the worker, so-called work and data of those people. So if you are giving ownership rights, when it generates when it generates biased content, you also want to accredit to them, and it's not something they want for themselves. And also, you said that um, even there's something about AI. Even its creators still today don't know how it operates. There's still a mystery around how AI generates content. So if they don't know how it operates yet, probably when we discover this, we discover that AI is probably becoming something like in form of a human, and it can think for it can think for itself. We don't know yet. So why should we giving ownership rights to anybody whose work and data we're using training these models? Now, AI is very similar in the, the, the development of AI is very similar i can do most things that human beings can do that means we can very soon you see that ai will start having fundamental human rights yes and then take for example you take a child to school and you train that person with textbooks teachers knowledge and so on when a person gets a career and gets a degree do you share the degree rights among people that are in the textbooks that were used in training these models the answer is no and also you said that um the so-called original content as um that the so-called original content the content that generates are, are coming from, are coming from the work of and data of these people it comes from the latent space there's something that it does it does, also does image recognition where it doesn't even see the Email, the so-called training data, it has to what recognize it. It has to do something they call guessing. Well, this is so much work that is put into this. That training data is not even that significant. And you also mentioned that um um if you, you I'll, I'll report one of your point that you said, if you want credibility for your work, that is, you want to be noticed, then you have to grow bigger. That's how the competition grows, not by giving ownership rights to small amount of people. And you say you can give the ownership rights to people in a region. Even a, I'm talking about billions of data here. Even a region, I mean, one sector of data that is used to train these models has millions of content in it. So how many people can you pick out to give this content and the ownership rights to? And I think you say that, um, record, you mentioned recognition that you give, um, um, is giving, it's good to give ownership recognition to these people. Well, yes, yeah, so is giving me some most of them. Like I mentioned in Shakespeare, what we're talking about here is rights, and you don't need to give rights to them. Thank you. Thank you very much, and well done, Ruth Okoracha. Great closing. You. you need more paper? Okay. We're going to get you more paper. <laughs> This is the third time you're debating an AI topic on I Beg to Differ, right? Because I remember your very first debate uh, ever with Chiago Zebonugu was, was AI as well, right? I think maybe you're going to be a coder. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you're going to tech afterwards. <laughs> no? Is, is that what you want? What do you want to do when, when, you know, in university? What are you thinking about studying? You don't know? Yeah. Law? Law? Oh, okay. I, I have interest in coding. Uh, okay, so. so okay, so maybe you do like, I don't know, um, <laughs> uh, tech law, maybe. <laughs> Chief, is there tech law? There is tech law, right? Okay. So so yeah, you go to tech law. Ramadan, what do you want to do after school? Uh, I have a lot of things on my mind. Mm -hmm. Firstly, um, I'm looking to venture into Web3. Web3? And, um, Speaking to the mic so we can all hear okay. you. <laughs> Firstly, I'm looking to venture into Web3 mm -hmm. and I just got an admission to study computer science. At Congratulations! The Oh my god! Oh, yeah, so. Okay. So a lot of interest. Okay, so you co own a fashion brand, you have admission to study computer science, you want to do web three as well. I am so proud of you. I'm so proud of you guys. Oh my gosh. Alright, we'll take a break. <laughs> Lagos, when we come back from this break, we'll go straight to the second topic. I know, we're just starting go. Ah, mm -hmm. what you heard is just topic one. So we're about to do topic two. Mm -hmm. And that's coming up when we come back from this break. We're still streaming live on Facebook. Nigeria Info 99.3, that's Facebook. YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. I'm Sandra Ezekwesalu, your moderator. Ruth, did you say something? 
Uh, I'm supporting this topic now. Yes, you are supporting now, and he, he'll be opposing that China is a better partner for uh, Africa than the West. It's a title that can only be earned, never given. It's a title that everyone wants, but only the best can claim. It's a title that Ramadan or Lalekon or Larikupo's fans believe he was denied. Ramadan, your road to one million naira ends here, but you are still in the competition. But there are no should haves or could haves in the record books. Only wins, losses, and chances at redemption. He gets that chance on Monday. One more win to remove the peoples from his nickname, People's Champion. Ruth Okorocha is a champion. Ruth Okorocha. Congratulations, Ruth, and well done. When her time came, she finished the job. And while every other champion has fallen, she stands one win away from a title with no other holders ever. Champion of champions. It's the final of the I beg to defer tournament of champions. I disagree with that by saying we've seen a lot of religious leaders who turned out to be morally debased. But how does this affect when there are not enough policies in place for these real markets to grow? Five tournaments over two years have all come down to this. Monday. My name is Ruth Okorocha. One winner. I'm a I'm a I'm a One winner, two million naira. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, your moderator. Join us as we crown our champion of champions. Will Ramadan rewrite history? Or will Ruth Okorocha repeat it? Find out Monday at 3 p.m. on www.nigeriainfo.fm. This tournament is brought to you by Paystack in association with Sunu Assurances. Supported by RLG Communications, Obiwisi.com, Just Like Non Dairy Ice Cream, Stover Industries, and Wazobia Max TV. 99.3 Nigeria Info, your number one station for talk. Let's talk. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. You're listening to the I Beg to Differ Debate Tournament of Champions. And we've heard amazing debates uh, for the first round or in the first debate. It was an excellent, excellent first debate. It's time now for our second debate. And of course, our second debate is that uh, China is a better partner for Africa than the West. China is a better partner for Africa than the West. During the first round, Ramadan supported our motion and Ruth opposed our motion. For this second round, Ruth will support that China is a better partner for Africa than the West, while Ramadan Oladipupo Olale Kong will oppose that China is a better partner for Africa than the West. Ladies and gentlemen, your three minutes to present Ruth it starts now. Thank you. Good afternoon, moderator, adjudicators, my opponents, attentive listeners and viewers. I'm Ruth Okorocha, affirming the resolution, China is a better partner for Africa than the West. First of all, is that whenever China partners with Africa, there's a level of productivity, whether it's in the form of infrastructure or economic advancement. When you compare that to the West, you see that like there's more credible and visible impact than the West that is more interested in placing sanctions than ensuring our development. Take Ethiopia, for example, in just five years of partnership, over 600 kilometers of roads were constructed in Addis Ababa alone. Additionally, is that China's partnership with Africa helps to connect African countries with each other, unlike the West that connects African countries to themselves, one well, of the reason why the regional value chain in, Afri in Africa is so low. But ever since China's partnership with Africa, there's been a rise in the regional value chain because China has come to partner with and um, invest in Africa and not their former colonies. Furthermore, is that most of the partnership that Africa signed up with the West are not fair, and even the resources that are being extended from these countries, very little are being awarded to them. Most of them got to this partnership while they were in desperate situations like war, disease outbreaks, and so on, while others were not enlightened and know about the kind of partnership that they were signing up to. China's management of finance is more effective than that of the West. The West Makes wasted small limited resources on expensive but 
budget. China's management is more competitive whilst maintaining the quality of the goods that are being produced. Take, for example, a $70 million project in Africa, where the EU bid for this with a budget of $86 million. Why is China bid for this with a budget of $68.7 million? Other things that there's more of a relationship between resources that leave the country and some of benefits, whether it's in the form of an airport, power supply, or infrastructural benefits. But the West is more interested in taking out these resources, and they don't really care if it's improving into the development of our country. In just 20 years of partnership with China, we saw over 100,000 kilometers of road being constructed 10,000 kilometers of railways and over 1,000 airports. And that thing is that China would let Africa develop at their own pace and by their own policies. Unlike the West, take for example the US Africa Summit, where President Biden and the United States, they called over Africans after setting the agenda, the policy, and the principles and simply called African leaders to come agree to a one sided plan. One thing about um, Africa's, uh, about um, China's part, China is that they are one of the fastest growing economy. So they're set to take over the EU and US in by mid century, and this is good business for Africa. I mean, it's very good to partner with a country that is more likely to be world power very soon, and then we can get some from advantage and protection over other countries, just like the US does for South Korea and Ukraine. Whenever with Western world partners with China, you see that they want to set conditions where they can influence the outcome of elections. And this has been seen in quite a number of countries. But one thing that China is doing differently, that has gotten over 63% of African leaders signing partnership with them, is that they do not involve in our politics and they don't pose a threat to our national sovereignty. China understands Africa's development more because there's more of a mutual understanding. China is developing. They are upper middle income countries and most African countries fall within that range. Why some others are close by at lower middle income countries? Because the margin is closer, it makes it more, uh, more better for them to understand themselves. Unlike the West that is fine to development and has probably forgotten what it's like to still be developing. Lastly, is that when the West invests in a country or colony, they invest only when there's a large base of resources. But China would also invest when the country shows an, an, an interest to replicate their development model. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruth Okorocha, and well done. <laughs> Let me remind you, Lagos, we're streaming live. <laughs> Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3, YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. Ramadan, three minutes to oppose. Starts now. It's rub my back, I rub yours, isn't it? Well, China has switched it up. We rub their backs while they whip ours. Majorita and majoricators, these are my opening arguments. Firstly, just as it takes time to understand a new language, it takes time to understand the complexities of a region. And the West has been affiliated with Africa 500 years before the Chinese. So they have a better understanding of how our system works, putting them at a better disposition for partnership. Secondly, the West prioritizes human rights due to their democratic system of government. And this has been reflective in their dealings with Africa. China, on the other hand, they have been continually accused of human rights abuse, like what happened during the Zambian coal mine scandal, where they subjected our workers to exploitative working conditions, long hours, no rest, no food, no water, no substantial pay. And my opinion seems to suggest that these set of people are better partners for us. Furthermore, the West are better advocates of transparency and they have taken huge steps to prove this. Like the US recently supported the EITI, which promotes transparency in the extractive industries. China, on the other hand, very notorious set of people. They have unclear lending practices that um, lure countries into debt traps, like what they did with Angola. Another point I would like to make is china is just one entity and if we rely on them as our sole partners it could potentially leave us vulnerable to chaos if the ties are severed the west on the other hand is um provides a more varied pool of opportunities for example if we have issues with the uk we could continue partnership with the us europe and canada and this provides a more stable basis for political partnership another point i would like to make is um the west are better partners for humanitarian aid according to the usaid in the year 2019 alone the west donated more than 3.75 trillion naira, trillion with a T, to humanitarian aid. China, on the other hand, they invested a relatively minute 22 billion to Syria alone, and we're already asking for an increased influence in their mining sector. Another point I would like to make is the West prioritizes development of our indigenous African labor. The Chinese, on the other hand, they would prefer to import their own labor force and reduce our indigenous labor force to black collar puppets, like what they did during the Zambia coal mine projects. Another point I would like to make is, according to the Migration Policy Institute, two. 150,000 Africans are in China. Now compare it to the 2.2 million Africans in the US. This shows that Africans are more culturally integrated with the West, so there is less cultural tension and this makes them better partners. Another point I would like to make is the US um, The US prioritizes environmental regards. Like the EU recently set um, an ambition to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The Chinese on the other hand, they don't care about environment as long as they are making profits. And we can see their factories releasing high amount of greenhouse gases and this is not healthy for our environment.
Another point I would like to make is we share a lot of synonymous values and beliefs with the U.S. Rule of law, democracy. These reduces the issues of civic tension and allows them to be better partners for us. Another point I would like to make is the West promotes tech development through a lot of their policies, like the African Global Development Fund set up by the EU. The Chinese, on the other hand, well, they will prefer to just create industries that will benefit them at the expense of our industries, or they take our resources, refine it into final products, bring it back to us, and sell it at outrageous prices. Another point I would like to make is there is less language barriers because we speak english the west speak english the chinese they speak chinese even though some of them understand english it can't quite understand the language as much as someone who was born and brought up in that region so there's less language barriers no matter how hard the chinese tries to learn english it can never be better than a man from the west thank you thank you very much ramadan well done we'll take a break when we come back from this break, it will be time for round two rebuttals. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, your moderator. Lagos, don't go away. Are you a business owner who's looking to boost sales? Check out Paystack Terminal. Paystack Terminal is a POS that helps you accept payments in multiple ways, including ATM cards, bank transfers, and USSD. Additionally, you can track sales in real time on your phone, even if you have multiple terminals in multiple stores. Paystack Terminal also comes with a global SIM card and fast Wi-Fi, so you never have to say the words, no network, and your customers never have to wait to confirm payments. What's more, you can connect Terminal to your existing POS systems, split your payouts into multiple bank accounts, do easy end-of-day accounting, and so much more. Paystack Terminal is the smart choice for ambitious businesses of all sizes. Visit paystack.com forward slash beg to differ to get yours. Again, that's paystack.com forward slash beg to differ. Every day, hardworking Nigerians set out with a mindset to overcome every challenge and have access to ultimate success. It's that resilience and drive that has inspired us to achieve many great things over the years. And Sunu Assurances Nigeria PLC aims to be your partner on that journey to consistent success. With our different insurance packages, you pick your way and we take the risk. Our services include motor insurance, marine insurance, fire insurance, house owner and householder insurance and so much more so come on board and let's move with you on your daily drive to greatness with sunu cover your smile gets wider call sunu assurances on 01 280 2012 or whatsapp chat on 091 384-367-75 Visit SunuAssurancesNigeria.com Check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Sunu Assurances Nigeria Sunu Assurances Insurance Our Business Champion It's a title that can only be earned never given It's a title that everyone wants but only the best can claim. It's a title that Ramadan or Lalekon or Larikupo's fans believe he was denied. Ramadan, your road to one million naira ends here, but you are still in the competition. But there are no should haves or could haves in the record books. Only wins, losses, and chances at redemption. He gets that chance on Monday. One more win to remove the Peoples from his nickname, Peoples Champion. Ruth Okorocha is a champion. Ruth Okorocha. Congratulations, Ruth, and well done. When her time came, she finished the job. And while every other champion has fallen, she stands one win away from a title with no other holders ever. Champion of champions. 
It's the final of the I beg to differ tournament of champions. I disagree with that by saying we've seen a lot of religious leaders who turned out to be morally debased. But how does this affect when there are not enough policies in place for these drama markets to grow? Five tournaments over two years have all come down to this. Monday. My name is Ruth Okorocha. One winner. I'm a dad, but I'm a dad, I'm a One winner. Two million naira. I'm Sandra Ezekwasili, your moderator. Join us as we crown our champion of champions. Will Ramadan rewrite history? Or will Ruth Okorocha repeat it? Find out Monday at 3 p.m. on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Stream the debate live on www.nigeriainfo.fm. This tournament is brought to you by Easter in association with Sunu Assurances. Supported by RLG Communications, Obiwisi.com, Just Like non Ice Cream, Stover Industries, and Wazobia Max TV. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, your moderator. It is now time for rebuttals. Lagos, let's start with the motion opposer. Ramadan, your three minutes start now. Say that the Chinese have an increased level of productivity and the um the West the Chinese have an increased level of productivity and the West focus on creating sanctions. Now, the same level of productivity that the Chinese have, the West also possess. I mean, if they are not productive, how they have been able to set up policies like the Young African Leaders Initiative, the Global Development Fund? And let's not forget the fact that majorities of our industrial es- estates are Western-owned. Like, for example, let's take the Agbara Industrial, es- the, uh, Agbara industrial Estate. 75% of the industries there are Western-owned. So the fact that they say, saying that they are not productive is not a good, is not right to say because if they are not productive, how they'd be able to set up such policies. And that point you tried to make was um, the Chinese help to connect African countries to each other. And you speculated that the West divides us without um, providing any evidence to prove it. The West, however, will benefit if we are interconnected. So they wouldn't want us to be separate. And they will want to join us together so they could ma- maximize their benefits. So there's no way they will try to separate us. And that point you tried to make was the partnership with, with the West is not fair. Once again, that was just a speculation. You did not back up with evi- any evidence. But the same Chinese who you suggest are fair partners are the same people who exploit our resources, take it to their countries, develop it, and come back to sell it to us at outrageous prices. Please speak about fairness, and you talk about that, the Chinese. Another point you try to make was China is better at managing finances. Now, managing doesn't mean effectiveness. Because they, they, they um, are cheaper than the West, doesn't mean they are more effective than the West. We've seen a lot of cases where people underestimate the value of a project and then go and under-deliver. So it's better for you to play safe, get the amount of money you think would go for the most effective use rather than low-balling it and ending up trashing it. Another point you try to make is the West is interested in taking our policies and changing them up. Now, this benefits us because they are developed and there is a reason why they are more developed than us. If the policies were not working for them, they will be worse than us. But it was working for them. And the fact that it was working for them is very likely going to work for us because we are asked to learn from the greats. And in this case, the West are the greats. At that point, you tried to make was China allows us to um, develop independently. Now, this doesn't be- necessarily benefit us. I mean, China is like that permissive parent that allows us to do what does what um China is like that permissive parent that will allow us to do what we want to do. And this doesn't quite turn out well as we have seen in the real life world. And that point you tried to make was we should be partners with the potential world power. Now I like to emphasize on the word potential. The West are the current world powers. I mean, would you like to partner with somebody who is likely to be a king at the expense of partnering with the already known king? And that point you tried to make was the West try to influence our electoral com- outcomes? How, I may ask? I mean, when did the West send talks to steal our ballot boxes? Or when did the West manipulate the votes and cancel and cancel and reconstruct? At that point, he tried to make was his more mutual understanding. But this is not true. We understand the West better. I mean, they speak our language. They share our values. They share our beliefs. We are democratic. They are democratic. We, val- we um, prioritize the rule of law. They prioritize the rule of law. So we understand them better than the Chinese will ever understand us. And that point, you try to make the West invest when there is a large base of resources. Any wise businessman is going to invest in the most profitable ventures. And now that doesn't necessarily mean the West do not prioritize any of the developed countries. I mean, um, Nigeria is not the most developed country in Africa, if we are speaking generally. And the West have invested in us. Togo is not the most developed country in Africa. The West have invested in them. Zimbabwe is not the most developed country in Africa. And the West have imp- um, invested in them. I also like to state a new point. Another point I would like to make is there is, a synonym- there is a synonymity in our religion. And this promotes mutual understanding, contrary to what you try to suggest. Another point I would like to make is the West relationship. When ch- we- the West relationship with Africa is more pragmatic than that of China because their policies are flexible enough to adapt to the unique needs of a locality. Thank you. Thank you very much and well done, Ramadan Oladikupo Olaleko.
Lagos, let me remind you, we're streaming live on Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3, YouTube Nigeria Info FM. One of my favorite things about this tournament of champions is how no matter the topic, I neck collects. It doesn't matter what the topic is, I neck collect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's come to Ruth Okoracha now. Ruth, you've got three minutes for rebuttals. Thank you very much. In your first point, you say that the West is affiliated with Africa. Affiliation, we're more of exploitation because ever since we've partnered with the West since colonization, we've seen that all they've done is exploit us and give us little for it. And then you say they reflect human rights. If they in go to the West, for example, in the United States, for example, there are lots of violations of human rights. If they don't know how to take care of the human rights condition in their own country, how should we trust them with taking care of the fundamental human rights of our own country? This is just simple propaganda in order to put Africa under their hood and for them to still continue what we call modern co colonization. And then you mentioned that there is um, transparency. There's no such transparency when it comes to Africa. Because Africa, any, anybody that comes to partner with Africa, they're not coming as a savior. They're coming for their own benefit. And people who are very plain about the benefits they're coming about is China. They come off street for with it. But the West tries to sugarcoat with so called transparency and so on that they don't even. Um, they don't will offer. Then you also mentioned death traps. So this is just a speculation that was raised by Western medias because we've not actually seen any Chinese, any any African country or any African country's assets being taken over by ch any ch by China. So this is just a speculation and not something that have actually happened. And then you mentioned that um, China is one entity, but um, and so on. The West are different entities and so on. Ever since the West has been partnered with Africa, we've not seen the much in their development. Take South Africa for example. Their biggest partner is is China, and they have most of the paved, most percent of the paved ways in Africa and then Ethiopia for example Ethiopia is the only country in Africa that you can compare or draw close to the emerging economy of Asian Tigers and they have the largest partnership from China and then you also mentioned that humanitarian aid and so on this humanitarian aid that they give are not works of charity no country is going to go no country is an orphanage home that each country just comes and give humanitarian aid to they actually give these things and they, they are backed they are behind the scenes um, conditions that they give to their leaders and so on and when I mentioned that um, they and when I mentioned that they involve in our politics you see that some of the contents and in our country, for example, they would sometimes, like during the recent election, we saw the contest start in Nigeria. They went to Britain to see, I don't know what they went to see actually, but you can see that these people actually influence our politics behind the scenes. They would only give support to a candidate that would be able to fulfill the conditions that they give to them. And then you mentioned that um, development of indigenous labor, that Chinese people, they bring their people over and so on. The only chances, the only instances that we've seen of this is only when, for example, a presidential candidate is trying to hurry up and finish up a project so that um, he can say that, okay, this is what I did during my term. And then he tries to tell the Chinese people to hurry up about it, and then they can go about looking for people and other workers. Then they bring Chinese people to fill the job. But you can see in the Angola, in the Angola China partnership, for example, it created 4,000 jobs, 12,000 indirect jobs, and 4,000 4, direct jobs to the people of Angola. And this is actually what it does it creates lots of job opportunities, unless the African government themselves are trying to hurry up the project. And that is when they bring these Chinese people on the consent of the African leaders. And then you mentioned that um, environmental factors and so on. Um, that's not actually credible because even the West themselves have industrial problems. They have environmental conditions and not only China has them and then you mentioned on um, political values that we should involve people we should partner with the West because we share more poli um, equal political values with them well what China does they don't affect our political values they say keep your political values just take the money and then we also take what we want it's mutual understanding between these two regions but the West they say they claim the so-called political values and they're trying to in these political values in the first place were imposed on us and not something that we actually chose for ourselves so if tomorrow we say we want to move to dictatorship that China practices it's our decision the West shouldn't have any um, any hand in it and then you mentioned that the West um, is like uh, you said something you said it's like uh, a, a preservative parent oh thank you thank you very much Ruth Okoracha and what a point that last point you made my god I was watching Chief when you made that point and his eyes popped out like yeah <laughs> I love debates Lagos I don't know if you can tell but I love debates Debates allow you to say what you like and back it up. And if it stands, it stands. It's not about who's right or who's wrong. It's about what points can you put on the table and can you defend it? And God, Lagos, the debaters in the studio today are doing a mighty fine job. Okay. I'm Sandra Ezekwesli, your moderator. We'll take a break. Just so that I can catch my breath, you know, and uh, make all the goosebumps on my body go away small, you know. And they also let the debaters themselves prepare for the final round. I can't believe we're here. We're already here. 
where uh, we are minutes away from finding out who the champion of champions is. Is it going to be Ramadan or Lalikupo or Laleko, the people's champion? Or is it going to be Ruth or Korocha, an actual champion from March 2022? Find out after this break. Champion. It's a title that can only be earned, never given. It's a title that everyone wants, but only the best can claim. It's a title that Ramadan or Lalekon or Larikupo's fans believe he was denied. Ramadan, your road to one million naira ends here, but you are still in the competition. But there are no shield herbs or cold herbs in the record books. Only wins, losses, and chances at redemption. He gets that chance on Monday. One more win to remove the peoples from his nickname, People's Champion. Ruth Okorocha is a champion. Ruth Okorocha. Congratulations, Ruth, and well done. When her time came, she finished the job. And while every other champion has fallen, she stands one win away from a title with no other holders ever. Champion of champions. It's the final of the I Beg to Defer Tournament of Champions. I disagree with that by saying we've seen a lot of religious leaders who turned out to be morally debased. But how does this affect when there are not enough policies in place for these Ramash markets to grow? Five tournaments over two years have all come down to this. Monday. My name is Ruth Okorocha. One winner. I'm a of Ramadan. One winner. Two million naira. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, your moderator. Join us as we crown our champion of champions. Will Ramadan rewrite history or will Ruth Okorocha repeat it? Find out Monday at 3 p.m. on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Stream the debate live on www.nigeriainfo.fm. This tournament is brought to you by Paystack in association with Sunu Assurances. Supported by RLG Communications, obiwisi.com, just like non Scream, Stover Industries, and Wazobia Max TV. Hey, 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 you know when I'm here, I've got good news for you. Yes, Paystack helps businesses like yours accept payments online from anyone, anywhere in the world, in any currency. So let's say you have customers in Nigeria, Ghana, the USA, or Malaysia. They can pay you online. Even they don't have naira they can pay you in dollars or cds or pounds or euros any currency that works for them and you you get paid that's why over 60,000 businesses startups and government agencies are using paystack right now paystack is powering their growth and if you choose paystack today you get free access to all the tools they're using. If you're just starting, these tools will help you launch your business and start getting paid. If you're already operating, they'll help you scale faster. I mean, what are you waiting for? Well, if you're wondering, what are these tools? If you don't have a website, Paystack helps you create one for free without any technical skills. There's the free mobile app for managing sales and orders even while you're on the move. And if you want to send invoices, fiam, you can do it right from the app or website and your customer can pay you online. And that's just the beginning oh, of what Paystack can do for you. So I know you want to get started. I mean, guess what? It's easy. Just open your free account at paystack.com slash beg to differ. That is paystack.com slash beg to differ sign up for free and right away you can access all the tools you need to get started and scale your business while getting paid from anyone anywhere and in any currency so what are you waiting for head over to paystack.com slash beg to differ and get started champion it's a title that can only be earned, never given. It's a title that 
everyone wants, but only the best can claim. It's a title that Ramadan or Lalekon or Larikupo's fans believe he was denied. Ramadan, your road to one million naira ends here, but you are still in the competition. But there are no should haves or could haves in the record books. Only wins, losses, and chances at redemption. He gets that chance on Monday. One more win to remove the peoples from his nickname, People's Champion. Ruth Okorocha is a champion. Ruth Okorocha. Congratulations, Ruth, and well done. When her time came, she finished the job. And while every other champion has fallen, she stands one win away from a title with no other holders ever. Champion of champions. It's the final of the I Beg to Defer Tournament of Champions. I disagree with that by saying we've seen a lot of religious leaders who turned out to be morally debased. But how does this affect when there are not enough policies in place for these Ramash markets to grow? Five tournaments over two years have all come down to this. Monday. My name is Ruth Okorocha. One winner. I'm a Bo Ramadan One winner. Two million naira. I'm Sandra Ezekwasili, your moderator. Join us as we crown our champion of champions. Will Ramadan rewrite history or will Ruth Okorocha repeat it? Find out Monday at 3 p.m. on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Stream the debate live on www.nigeriainfo.fm. This tournament is brought to you by Paystack in association with Sunu Assurances. Supported by RLG Communications, Obiwisi.com, Just Like non Ice Cream, Stova Industries and Wazobia Max TV. I am Sandra Ezekwesili, a moderator. That's all I am, a moderator, not a judge. And I've got before me today Ruth Okorocha and Ramadan Oladipupo Olalekon. They have already debated that people whose data and work is used to train AI like DAL-E or ChatGPT should have some ownership rights over the art or insights it generates. Now they are debating that China is a better partner for Africa than the West. If you just joined us, you You've missed two rounds. It's now time for closing. And for closing, we'll start with the motion supporter, Ramadan. Your final three minutes. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ruth. <laughs> My bad. I'm excited. All right, Ruth. Your final three minutes uh, in the Channel of Champions starts now. Thank you very much. In China and Africa's partnership, there's more transparency because it's something that they do not resent doing. You see, Africa is very crucial to China's foreign policy, and this is shown in the support that it had during the liberalization movement that we had during the Cold War. And also, their enthusiasm it showed, for example, during the Zambia blockade by the United States, by the back be- be- on the United States to construct, construct way ways for them because they lack transportation facilities. And although the United States had the facilities to do that, they refused. But when they consulted China through the help of the Tanzanian government, although China did not have that infrastructure in their place, they willingly put their best to work. Also, there's more of a contact continuity rates when we partner with China because there's always more that can be done after each project. The mutual benefit that is derived by these two developing countries makes it possible for more development to come into place. Another thing to consider is that China has more hands-on experience than the United States. You see, the United States is losing the, the race technological know-how and also retainment of talent to China, which is enabling China to have more bigger industries, for example, the textile industry. And that is why, for example, um, Ethiopia's partnership with China to develop their own textile industry has been a success story. China would give every African country equal treatment, and this shows how serious they are about African development. This is shown in the way they treat African delegations, irrespective of how small or weak the country is. And that thing is that the West has found itself an exploitation guard in Africa, and we don't have arms to fight them. The only way to fight them is by partnering more with China, because take, for example, the allegation that were against acacia mining where between 2010 and 2015 they paid only eight percent royalties to the government and also they paid 444 million dollars to their sales shareholders without paying corporate taxes lastly is over 50 years of partnership that we have with the west and we've not seen the much needed development but suddenly china has come into the story with a shorter term and they've shown so much development and the west is coming back with so much um, com- com- um commissions conferences and so on to persuade african leaders to come back to them this, is, this shows that they see africa as a tool to fight back their rivalry which is china now comes to the 
point that you make. You said that um, 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 the Western world also first started developing. Maybe you are my first point. Well, the most developed countries in Africa, you see, they have a larger partnership with China than the West. You mentioned Agbara, in, for example. Agbara is in Nigeria. And Nigeria is not even developed. It's never among the most developed countries in Africa. And you see, that's because the larger range of their partnership has been with the West. And you said that um, the West, I want to mention that the West uh, divides us more than it um, brings us together. You rebutted that point. Well, if you take, for example, France would only invest in countries that it colonized before. Why the um, British, for example, would only invest in countries that it colonized before? This is the division of and This is the evidence I'm, what you asked about. And you said um, um, they don't exploit that as the China that exploits us. Well, I give you the equation mind, for example. And you mentioned that low budget and so on. Well, if you're giving low budget with high is better than high budget with using so many so much expensive tools for example when they want to carry out project if you give it to western countries they'll for example make it of a mercedes truck rather than picking affordable trucks that something that they would just use for once and they're not making use of it again and that's me say that um africa um that africa needs to actually partner with the west because they don't need to develop at their own pace africa is different from the west and need to develop at their own pace and by their own rules you said um it's like partner with china is like a permissive parents that allows africa to do it when did africa become a child please they've known development, they've known independence and they're allowed to make their own decisions for their own self that will benefit their own economy. And since you've mentioned that the, um, China is not yet a current world power, yes. But since the current world power is not interested in our development, why not partner with one that would likely be a world power very soon because it's set to take over, logistics have shown that they're set to take over the US and EU in by mid-century. And when they do this, we'll, be first -hand ex we'll have a first-hand experience of um, benefits from them. And then you say that um, the, the religion and so on, but religion does not enhance development in any form. I mean, we need money for infrastructure and not similar same as where we can say okay this person said this and this and this and this person said this in my church and so on religion does not enhance development in any way and then another point you mentioned is that um and it brings back africa um confirmed that okay you say china offers um china offers more loans when africa needs it and this is something that the west does not do the history that we've had with western loans had not been favorable favorable at all. Take, for example, the loans that they gave us during the Bretton Woods loans. This has gave us so much traumatizing conditionalities. conditionalities. And you say that um, one thing to note is that we need low interest loans that China provides. And then they are directly or indirectly responsible for most of the crisis in Africa. Yes, most of the crisis that happens in Africa, the West has their hands in it. And then an effective partnership is one where one partner can choose to opt in or out of that partnership. But this is something that, China, that Africa does not have when they partner with the West because the West uses it first. And whenever China and Africa shows resistance to their mining interests, they would then make use of militarization or bring in false claims of so-called um, of so-called sanctions in order to have their way and then oppress Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much, Russo Koracha. Well done. <laughs> what a way to close. And then we come to the people's champion. Ramadan. Your final three minutes to go home with that two million starts now. My first point on the West affiliation with Africa, you ignore the point I tried to make and went ahead to rebut another point. The point I made was the fact that they have spent longer time with Africa will lead to a better understanding of our system and thus facilitate a better partnership. Secondly, you said violation of human rights in the West. Do you want to compare human rights violation in the West to that of China? Another joke, please. According to the Freedom Index, the West remains higher than the Chinese in the Freedom Index list, which shows oppression in different countries. And this says a lot about human rights. Thirdly, you only speculated that there's no transparency that the West only tried to sugarcoat. Sugarcoating is making false promises. So if I stand up to support a treaty that fosters transparency publicly, it's not a false promise. And this shows that I'm actually ready to show some commitment. Fourthly, you also suggested that debt traps are a, f a fictional concept cooked up by the West because China has not taken over countries as a result of debt. Debt traps doesn't mean taking over a country. It only means engulfing them in debts that will be very hard to pay, like what's happening with Angola. Fifthly, you also speculated that there's no development driven by the West. Railways, highways, power plants, you name it, the West they've built it. So suggesting that they don't drive development, really. Furthermore, you also tried to say that um, humanitarian aid are no works of charity. And if I give you money and I tried, um, yeah, you said uh, most of the times the West does those humanitarian aid so they could get benefit from us. I mean, if I give you money and I try to benefit from you, and another person comes to you and just wants to benefit from you, which would be better for you? Of course, the person who gives you an, a, a humanitarian aid. And that point that you, you tried to make was my point on environmental concerns was not credible. Really, environmental concerns are the closest we have to the end of the world. And the West are actively trying to save us. Like the EU, like I've said earlier, the EU are trying to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And you said the point is not credible. Another point you made was the West 
protest are imposing political policies. Nobody bans you to their policies. If we decide to abandon democracy today, nobody from the West is going to come from us. Another point you made was China has a cunning. Um, another point I would like I would like to make was Ch is China has a cunning system of stealing our talents with scholarships and incentivizing them to stay in China, facilitating brain drain. Another point you made was the, you said that the West are not interested in our development. I've told you on and on different policies that the West have set up to show that they are interested in our development. So that is only a speculation. Another point I, you said was China offers more loans. Yes, but you seem to forget that their low interest rates are strategic to their debt trap ideology. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. Ramadan and uh, well done. We'll take a break. When we come back, what happened there? You had time left. I was actually trying to look for it, but I couldn't find it. You were looking for your points and you couldn't find You had time there. You had time. Ramadan, what happened there? All right, we'll take a break. When we come back from this break, Lagos, <laughs> we'll find out who our champion of champions is. The debaters have done their part. It's now up to the judges to collate the results. Now, of course, they will do their collation and they will let me know and I'll announce the results. We're streaming live. Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3. YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. I'm Sandra Ezekwesli, your moderator. Don't go away. Champion. It's a title that can only be earned, never given. It's a title that everyone wants, but only the best can claim it's a title that Ramadan or Lalekon or Larikupo's fans believe he was denied. Ramadan, your road to one million naira ends here, but you are still in the competition. But there are no should haves or could haves in the record books. Only wins, losses, and chances at redemption. He gets that chance on Monday. One more win to remove the Peoples from his nickname, Peoples Champion. Ruth Okorocha is a champion. Ruth Okorocha. Congratulations, Ruth, and well done. When her time came, she finished the job. And while every other champion has fallen, she stands one win away from a title with no other holders ever. Champion of champions. It's the final of the I Beg to Defer Tournament of Champions. I disagree with that by saying we've seen a lot of religious leaders who turned out to be morally debased. But how does this affect when there are not enough policies in place for the Israel match markets to grow? Five tournaments over two years have all come down to this. Monday. My name is Ruth Okorocha. One winner. I'm a boy, I'm a boy, I'm a boy. One winner, two million naira. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, your moderator. Join us as we crown our champion of champions. Will Ramadan rewrite history? Or will Ruth Okorocha repeat it? Find out in association with Sunu Assurances. Supported by RLG Communications, Obiwisi.com, Just Like Non-Dairy Ice Cream, Stover Industries, and Wazobia Max TV. Every day. Hardworking Nigerians set out with a mindset to overcome every challenge and have access to ultimate success. It's that resilience and drive that has inspired us to achieve many great things over the years. And Sunu Assurances Nigeria PLC aims to be your partner on that journey to consistent success. With our different insurance packages, you pick your way and we take the risk. Our services include motor insurance, marine insurance, fire insurance, house owner and householder insurance, and so much more. So come on board and let's move with you on your daily drive to greatness. With Sunu Cover, your smile gets wider. Call Sunu Assurances on 01-280-2012 or WhatsApp chat on 091-384-36775. Visit SunuAssurancesNigeria.com. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Sunu Assurances Nigeria. Sunu Assurances. Insurance. Our business. Champion. 
It's a title that can only be earned, never given. It's a title that everyone wants, but only the best can claim. It's a title that Ramadan or Lalekon or Larikupo's fans believe he was denied. Ramadan, your road to one million naira ends here, but you are still in the competition. But there are no should haves or could haves in the record books. Only wins, losses, and chances at redemption. He gets that chance on Monday. One more win to remove the peoples from his nickname, People's Champion. Ruth Okorocha is a champion. Ruth Okorocha. Congratulations, Ruth, and well done. When her time came, she finished the job. And while every other champion has fallen, she stands one win away from a title with no other holders ever. Champion of champions. It's the final of the Ibeck to the Fair Tournament of Champions. I disagree with that by saying we've seen a lot of religious leaders who turned out to be morally debased. But how does this affect when there are not enough policies in place for these Ramash markets to grow? Five tournaments over two years have all come down to this. Monday. My name is Ruth Okorocha. One winner. I'm a boy, I'm a boy, I'm a boy. One winner, two million naira. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, your moderator. Join us as we crown our champion of champions. Will Ramadan rewrite history or will Ruth Okorocha repeat it? Find out Monday at 3 p.m. on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Stream the debate live on www.nigeriainfo.fm. This tournament is brought to you by Paystack in association with Sunu Assurances. Supported by RLG Communications, obiwisi.com, just like non dairy ice Cream, Stover Industries, and Wazobia Max TV. Are you a business owner who's looking to boost sales? Check out Paystack Terminal. Paystack Terminal is a POS that helps you accept payments in multiple ways, including ATM cards, bank transfers, and USSD. Additionally, you can track sales in real time on your phone, even if you have multiple terminals in multiple stores. Paystack Terminal also comes with a global SIM card and fast Wi-Fi, so you never have to say the words Nunatwok, and your customers never have to wait to confirm payments. What's more, you can connect Terminal to your existing POS systems, split your payouts into multiple bank accounts, do easy end-of-day accounting, and so much more. Paystack Terminal is the smart choice for ambitious businesses of all sizes. Visit paystack.com forward slash beg to differ to get yours. Again, that's paystack.com forward slash beg to differ. Champion. It's a title that can only be earned, never given. It's a title that everyone wants, but only the best can claim. It's a title that Ramadan or Lalekon or Larikupo's fans believe he was denied. Ramadan, your road to one million naira ends here, but you are still in the competition. But there are no should haves or could haves in the record books. Only wins, losses, and chances at redemption. He gets that chance on Monday. One more win to remove the peoples from his nickname, People's Champion. Ruth Okorocha is a champion. Ruth Okorocha. Congratulations, Ruth, and well done. When her time came, she finished the job. And while every other champion has fallen, she stands one win away from a title with no other holders ever. Champion of champions. 
It's the final of the I beg to differ tournament of champions. I disagree with that by saying we've seen a lot of religious leaders who turned out to be morally debased. But how does this affect when there are not enough policies in place for these drama markets to grow? Five tournaments over two years have all come down to this. Monday. My name is Ruth Okorocha. One winner. I'm a boba madonna like. One winner, two million naira. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, your moderator. Join us as we crown our champion of champions. Will Ramadan rewrite history or will Ruth Okorocha repeat it? Find out Monday at 3 p.m. on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Stream the debate live on www.nigeriainfo.fm. This tournament is brought to you by Paystack in association with Sunu Assurances. Supported by RLG Communications, Obiwisi.com, Just Like non Ice Cream, Stover Industries and Wazobia Max TV. Lagos, I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. And uh, I would like to thank both our debaters today, Ruth Okorocha and Ramadan Olaleko Oladipo. You are both magnificent. You did things today that I don't know if we will be able to see again on I Beg to Differ. You brought your A-plus game today. Ramadan was the most confident I've ever seen him. Ruth did not let that phase her because there's this magical thing that Ramadan does during rebuttals, you know. And Ruth was tenacious and she kept going. And Ramadan made some really delicious points. You guys are some of the best debaters I've ever met in my life. And I have met some really phenomenal debaters um, on I Beg to Differ. I want to thank you for giving this all that you have, bringing your A-plus game today. And I just want to say that you gave our judges a really tough time to judge this. Now, I've got results in my hands. And um, we have a unanimous decision. Before me are results from Judge Vaughn Ohaifo, Judge Adenike Arobonlo joining us from Canada, Judge Roland Asibu joining us from South Africa, and our Chief Judge Andy Oboforibo. And they have unanimously agreed on who our champion of champions is. We're streaming live Lagos on Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3, YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. George Vaughan gave it 219 to 215. Judge Adenika Robonlo gave it 200 to 193. Judge Roland gave it 198 to 191. And Chief Andy Oboforebo gave it 192 to 185. All these votes go to our new champion of champions Ruth Okorocha congratulations to you and well done thank you Let's take a look at the breakdown of those points in the presentation round for the first debate. Ramadan scored 26 points from Roland, 25 from Adenike, 23 from Chief for Boforibo. And um, 24 from Vaughn or Haifo. That's Ramadan. 
Now, of course, Ruth Okorocha in the presentation style got 24 from Roland, 23 from Adenike. Yes, for presentation round. I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm looking at the right things now. And uh, 25 from Andy. Am I looking at the right course sheets now? Yes, I think I am. And then for Vaughn, we have 30 here. China is... Uh, no, we're looking at the first one. I'm sorry. So, so let me take that again. Let me take that again. All right. So for presentation, Ramadan, 26 for Roland, 25 for Adenike. Um, Chief, which one is the first topic and which one is the second topic? Because you didn't uh, indicate. And then for Vaughn, we've got 24 for Ruth Okorocha and um, 35 for Ramadan Oladipu. 36 actually for Ramadan Oladipu or Olalikong. And then for Ruth Okorocha, we've got 24 from Roland, 23 from Adenike. And uh, for Chief, we've got uh, 25 here and 27. But uh, Chief didn't label, so I'm not sure which is which. Uh, Ruth, can you pass this over to Chief, please? Thank you. So he'll tell us which is which. And then for um, uh, presentation style, we've got um, a tie, 10-10 for Ramadan and Ruth. That's for the first topic. In the rebuttal round, so 10-10 from Adenike and from Roland. Then, of course, for Vaughn or Haifo in the first topic, we have uh, uh, nine points for Ramadan and nine points for Ruth Okorocha. So both of them were really keeping it back to back, very, very close. Now, of course, on Chief scorecard here, I'm seeing nine points for uh, Ruth Okorocha and nine points as well for Ramadan or Ladikupo or Lalekong. Now, for rebuttal round in the first topic, we We've got Ramadan scoring 14 on Roland's card. We've got um, Adenike scoring Ramadan 16. We've got um, Chief scoring Ramadan 15. We've got um, Chief scoring Ruth 21. We've got Vaughn scoring. Let me take a look at that. We've got Vaughn scoring um, Ruth 26. And we've got Vaughn scoring Ramadan 20. Now for style, Vaughn there is 9. For closing points, Vaughn scores 12. For Ruth, uh, for Ramadan, closing style, 9. Which brings it to a total of 95. Very close call for all of them. So you have on Vaughn's scorecard, 95 to Ramadan in the first topic. And 215 to to um, uh, Ramadan as well in the, no, actually grand total, sorry, 120 to Ramadan in the second topic. I'm looking at Ruth's scorecard. Ruth got uh, 105 in the first topic and 114 in the second topic. Chief scores um, Ruth 85 in the first, 107 in the second. In the, uh, for Ramadan, it's 80 one and uh, 104 for both topics bringing it to 185 we're going to snap all of these things and put it up on facebook so that people can view it for themselves but congratulations to both of you and well done uh, can we have the check please for the champion of champions congratulations to you again and well done how are you feeling ruth are those tears i see in your eyes are those tears are those tears, Ruth? How are you feeling? Talk to me. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm still surprised. You're still surprised? Okay. Well, congratulations to you. You just became our champion of champions. Ramadan, thank you for all the magic that you've given us along this journey. From your very first edition all the way to today, you've been a big part of making I beg to differ the magic that it is. I wish the closing didn't happen, but it did. And uh, from the scorecards I was seeing, you were ahead until the closing happened. Um, but that's what life is, isn't it? You know, you, you get close enough and then it just... It switches, but you put up a good fight, and she was a formidable opponent. And my God, well done! I'd love to hear from Vaughn. Vaughn, how are you feeling? You know, you're a judge here. How are you feeling, Sandra? If I if I told you that my heart did not beat faster than I don't know, I, I 
it was difficult judging this debate mm. because Ramadan would throw a shot and Ruth would come back, you know, and, and then Ruth it. would throw and Ramadan. And I kept thinking, God, are we going to have a winner today? <laughs> it was hard. In fact, when collating the results, mm -hmm. my heart kept thumping really fast. I said, oh my God, who's the, oh my God. <laughs> It was difficult. So I gave the I gave the results to the chief the judge and looked at his face to see if what I was experiencing was what he too he was experiencing. <laughs> and I mean from the look of it, he was like, Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it was it was difficult. It was difficult. It was difficult chief one. judge, let's hear from you. You heard these kids today. Talk to us about what you've just experienced. Well, let me just start by saying that um you know, the this is one of the best debates we've ever had. Indeed. Yes. I, I don't think I can I could have asked for a more deserving final mm -hmm. and two more deserving finalists. I think you don't get to the final of the Abetid Tournament of Champions, everything that gets you here, if you haven't earned it. But these two debaters over-earned it today. Mm -hmm. And just kudos to both of them. Mm -hmm. It was a very, very tight debate. It and that's fierce. the type of debate I like, even though it's very stressful. <laughs> so every point counted. Every yeah. single turn of phrase, every turn of style counted today. Yeah. And I just want to say, it was a unanimous decision, yeah. but that does not mean it was a walkover. Yeah. It was very tight on every judge's scorecard. It, it came down to just margins on both sides. So both of you can walk away with a lot of pride today. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of both of you. It almost feels like, in a way, you're almost like my children in the sense that <laughs> I have been listening to you guys since yeah. audition. Mm -hmm. And watching you grow as debaters and get better, you know, I think my happiest moment was hearing you both in the tournament of champions for the first time and i was like oh my god she's gotten better how is that possible then oh my god he's gotten better how is that possible <laughs> and you guys your first debate was against each other mm -hmm. and watching you come back from that and you're even better today than you were on that day two of this tournament mm -hmm. no kudos to both of you well done all right let's uh, present the checks now we've got our sponsors from paystack here we've also got our sponsors from Sunu Assurance is here. Paystack is our um, headline sponsor. And of course, Sunu Assurance is... Um, <laughs> Sunu Assurance is uh, our associate sponsor. And they're both here today uh, to essentially take a look at their investment. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. You can come into the studio. Come into the studio. Come this way. Ramadan, you need to stay here as well because we, we need to take pictures with you. And we've got um, additional gifts from Paystack for you guys. All right. So let's meet the guys from Paystack. What's your name? Hi. Hi. My, my name is Folu Otubanjo. Hi, Folu. Hi. What do you do for Paystack, Folu? Um, I lead the account, key accounts team. Okay. Paystack. Okay. All right. So we have someone else from Paystack as well. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Dapo. Okay. Um, and I am a startup partner at okay. Paystack. Okay. All right. And we've got additional gifts for the first two debaters today. But before we get to that, talk to us about why you decided to partner with Nigeria Info on this. Um, do you want to go? Or? You go. Okay. Okay. So, um, in a country where, um, I mean, in the entertainment industry, it's not very uncommon to find that um, the kinds of um, shows that brands like to, you know, throw their weight behind are, are shows that are typically the ones that command the largest viewership. But um, in a country like Nigeria, we think the kinds of um, entertainment um, shows that should be supported are uh, shows like this where um, school children are encouraged um, to pursue, you know, um, to pursue things that improve them, to Im pursue things that um, Im improve them academically. So um, as Space Tech, um we like to think these are the kinds of, you know, um, shows that we would like to support. Um, yeah, so that's why we decided that we were going to to get on board yeah. here. Yeah. And I know that we have additional gifts. So let me, of course, remind Lagos that um, even though our champion of champions walks home with the two million naira, we have gifts from obwc.com for um, our second place finisher, Ramadan Olalekwa Oladikupo. We also have um, gifts, additional gifts from Paystack for Ramadan. What's the additional gift that Paystack is giving to Ramadan today? 
Okay, so we have notebooks mm -hmm. and we have a tablet. Okay. And we have some pay stack merch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I, I, so gifts. Okay. All right. <laughs> now, before we go to the presentation of gifts proper, we have um, someone from our associate sponsor as well, uh, Sunu Assurances. So we have their head of human resources here, Jakari Modibo Yusuf. Jakari, good to see you here. Welcome. See you, Could Sandra. you? Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm so happy you're here with us. Yes. Thank you so much, Sandra. Yes. So, um, yes, like Sandra said, my name is Japari Modibo Yusuf. I'm the head of corporate services for Sono Assurances. I'm also here with my colleague. I'll give him the mic to introduce himself. Okay. okay um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, good afternoon. My name is um, James M. Kababatunde. Okay. So, um, I, I head the multi client and um, direct sales unit um, in Sono Assurances, Nigeria. PLC. Okay. All right. Let's talk about why I beg to differ for Sono Assurances. Why? Okay. Um, let me take it. So, like for us, I think. Um, this is assurance and the future value, or the looking at how we can support the um, growing generation so that we can help to develop the value system in the society. Because these are initiatives that we believe would help to further, you know, build the future um, future um, students in the society. Mm, okay, and then of course obiwizi.com is here. Obiwizi will be giving a, a laptop to Ruth Okorocha and a Nintendo Switch to Ramadan. Obiwizi, talk to us. Talk to us, obiwizi.com. Obiwizi, by the way, Obiwizi has been doing this with us from the very first I Beg to Differ. We cannot thank Obiwizi enough for yeah. partnering with us um, yeah. every time, every edition of I Beg to Differ. Giving these kids smartwatches. I'm seeing that Ramadan is wearing one of the smartwatches <laughs> that he was given by Obiwizi. Uh, so, I mean, talk to us. Did you listen? Who were you rooting for? Talk to us. Uh, it was it was really a tough one. So Mike. I can't I can't just say I'm um, picking this over this because yeah. we both have a point. Yeah. So and I've never seen this kind of debate. I know, I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now that we've gotten that out of the way, I think let's move to the part where we present the check. So for that I'm gonna need you, Fola, to help us, Polu, sorry, to help us with that. I'm also going to need you, Jack Barry, to help us with that. We've got a check here of uh, it's a very giant check. Ruth, come over. Oh my god, it's it's very giant, it's gigantic. Oh my gosh, I can barely carry it. Oh my god. Ah, it's so heavy. All right, Ruth, stand here. Uh, Japari, this way, please. Folu is tall, so us, you know, short <laughs> girls, we have to st we have to stick together. <laughs> All right, uh, can you can you hold that over there? All right, great. Aha! Oh my God. Okay, so you want us to move the chair away? Lagos, we're still streaming live on Facebook, by the way. Facebook is Nigeria Info ninety nine point three. And YouTube is Nigeria Info FM. Okay, so while we're taking pictures. <laughs> I know. She's the same height with, uh, with uh, Polu there, yeah. <laughs> okay, so do we have good pictures, good enough pictures for you guys? Move the chair. Move the chair? Oh, okay. So we have like, uh, we're still gonna go and take proper pictures elsewhere. Sandra? Yes. Oh, sorry. All right, great. Okay. Uh, congrats again. Can we do one where we're shaking her hands, please? All right. Can we do one where we're, where we're shaking her hands? Because it's not easy to face Ramadan and live. <laughs> it really isn't easy. Ramadan has taken down a number of champions. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Right? Good. Okay. All right. So let's have one with just Ruth in the studio so that when we splash it on like billboards and stuff, it's just her carrying a giant check. <laughs> this is the first time Ruth has won the one million and been smiling. Mo the last time she, no, well, this is two millions, so I guess it will make you smile. The last time she won one million, Ruth was like, eh, this is just what I do. <laughs> Congratulations to you, Ruth, and well done. All right, can we present the tablet from Paystack to Ruth now? We're still expecting our general manager, Femio Bong Daniels, to join us. And uh, when he does join, hopefully we'll be able to um, take a few pictures with him. But uh, let's bring it out of the bag. 
You have to bring it out of the bag. Okay. Let's bring it out of the bag. Okay. There we go. Lagos, we're still streaming live. Facebook, Nigeria, Info 99.3. YouTube, Nigeria, Info FM. Okay. Congratulations again, Ruth. Uh, Ramadan, come over. We've got a tablet for you as well from Paystack. Paystack, by the way, again, Lagos is our headline sponsor, and we want them to come back and do this again with us. So... With Mr. Fimmer. Yes, he's gonna. He's he's he's. We, we'll get to all of that. Let's do this. Okay. So don't forget Lagos to visit paystack.com forward slash back to differ, so that when we come and meet them again for money, they'll say, "Oh yeah, sure. Take this. Go do another one." <laughs> all right. We've just been joined by the general manager, Ku Wazobia Info FM, Femi Obong Daniels. Femi, good to see you. Good. Um, what time is it? Evening. Good evening to yeah, you. Good evening. Well done again, um, yet again, Sandra, for an excellent, excellent. Um, I, I, I think I think the Chiefs summed it up uh, quite succinctly. The the tournament of champions lived to lived up to expectation, lived beyond expectation, it did. and 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 now people can understand why these um, young ones were champions of their um, various uh, initial tournaments, and, and it was good to see Ramadan go. All the way to the, I, final, I, uh, to, yes. to, the to the final, so, and uh, for Ruth, again, you know, for some of these champions, um, it was the first time of taste tasting defeat. Yes. Um, Tabita was Tambita one. Kaushik. Tabita Kaushik mm -hmm. was one. Tabita uh, um, and I, I, I like I like I like the battle, the rematch between. Uh, um, Ruth, Ruth and, and Debra. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, Ruth, Debra. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's a big story that we are proud to be a part of. Yeah. And and we we uh, we look back um, and and say thank you to all who's made this possible, particularly our sponsors, every single one of them, Paystack, um, uh, for uh, continuing. And we, we're looking forward. You know, you get to this point where you are like, okay, where do we go from here? How do we top this? Mm -hmm. Um, but we have the confidence. Um, Sandra is forever working. Sandra has a habit of going on leave right <laughs> after <laughs> one of these debates, and and it, and, and it's understandable. Uh, the, the amount of work. Uh, there were there were times when I was like, you do this every day, yeah. even even you know, uh, cutting uh, the actualities, reworking um, the promotions, telling the stories. Yeah. Every single debate is a story on its own, and, and you've told it so effectively. So I'd say well done. But well done to Ruth. Um, um, you, <laughs> you know, when you've been here before and you've said congratulations to one of these young ones, and you come back again and you say congratulations, <laughs> I don't know where you go from here. Maybe next up is the presidency. <laughs> but, um, but congratulations. And, and, and uh, congratulations to everybody. Um, uh, um, the runners up uh, for a great fight. Um, we're, we're just proud. Um, you listen to these youngsters and, and you kind of get some hope in the midst of all the uh, gloom and doom. Uh, you just you just have hope. And these are people who are young. Some some of the topics they deal with and some of the directions they take the topics to. You are like, how old? How old is she again? How old is he again? <laughs> You know, uh, and Ruth is just fifteen. It's, it's beautiful. She's not even old enough to be in the it's university. Be beautiful. Yet. <laughs> she's uh, taking jam, but she can't go because she's know. too young. So, um, so congratulations, two million naira, thoroughly, thoroughly um, deserved. We have a, uh, we have a, we have a trophy for you to present. Yep. Excellent, to Ruth. Excellent. Now I'm in love with this. Uh, the symbolism of this, um, Ruth, would need you to step up for this. Um, you probably need to help me. With yes, this. I will. Now. Um, Ruth, you know why I like the symbolism of this trophy? It combines everything. Uh, the spirit of a champion, the power of the microphone. It's one of the biggest powers in the world. The ability to reach, to speak to an audience, uh, be it an audience of one, a million, a hundred million, doesn't matter. But with that privilege comes a lot of responsibility. 
and as professional broadcasters, we never take that responsibility lightly because every time we open our mouths, somebody somewhere is potentially inspired. And if we say the wrong thing, we could mislead somebody out there. So for all the hard work as you've done, for all the research, um, for the sleepless nights, and everything you did, you needed to do to get here, congratulations, thoroughly deserved. Congratulations, darling. Lagos was still showing this live on Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3, YouTube Nigeria Info FM. Okay, all right. Can we have our sponsors come back, please, so that we can take a picture with the trophy and Ruth, and also with the general manager, Cool was uh, Info FM. So, yes, we have. Okay. Um, no, at the same time. So let's do a group, and then we can do one after the other. So we'll have um, Jack Barry and um, Folu. Ruth in the middle. <laughs> yes. Him do it. Okay, great. Okay, so, so should we have uh, Dio instead? Okay. I don't know. Folu, what do you think? Should we have Dio instead? No, no, no. Yeah, Dapko instead, sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Dapko? No? Yes? This way? Because you haven't been in any of the pictures yet. Actually, yeah, Dapko would be used I don't think it matters. You don't think it does? Well, you're wearing Paystack merch, so. <laughs> Your wife pays that merch. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. okay. He was two millionaire smile. <laughs> oh, <that's great. laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So let's take one with just Ruth and the trophy. The champion of champions. Champion of champions, champion yes. Champion of champions. And then, even as we do that, um, we, we will not stop saying thank you to our sponsors. Uh, Paystack, Sunu Assurance, Obi Weezy. Um, who, who am I leaving out? Um, Stover Industries. Stover Industries. Um, just the light non dairy ice cream, who will mm. be providing ice cream to Ruth's school. Mm. So, are, are you happy that they're giving your school ice cream? Yeah. Goodness gracious, how's that going to work? Your school was asking for ice cream? Okay, cool. So All right, the, the entire school. The entire school, yeah. yeah I don't <laughs> want to ask what the population is. I'm sure they got it covered. <laughs> so they're going to they're gonna do that. What's the name of your school again? Kingsway College, Ojo. All right, so Kingsway yeah. College, Ojo, is in luck. They're about to get lots of ice cream from, yeah. <laughs> from Just Delight Non-Dairy Ice Cream. Uh, mm. Thank you so much to them. Stover Industries, um, they're the makers of Swiss um, air freshener. You probably have one in your car, in mm. your house. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and they jumped on you this as well. probably should. Um, and, and, and all OBWeezy. OBWeezy.com is here. OBWeezy.com yes, providing I, lots of items. Items, electronics. Yeah. My, my office has been a bit of a storehouse. <laughs> uh, and RLG sometimes. Communications as well. Mm -hmm. RLG provided tablets for um, the top eight that made it to the quarterfinals. So both of them who are here now have tablets from RLG. He's going to get a Nintendo Switch from OBWeezy.com as well as uh, Porodo Pods. Um, this, there's so much. Like they're just, They were just embarrassed with lots of gifts. <laughs> we give them lots of gifts <laughs> for participating. Yes, and, and quite deservedly so. So we would never say um, thank you enough. We look forward to working with you all, our sponsors, in, in, in the next um, um, tournament as we build again. Um, uh, as we begin to build all the way to national. And, and at some point, maybe we'll even go international with this. Uh, are you up to it, Sandra? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Most deaf. Just give me money. <laughs> <laughs> Most deaf. <laughs> All right. So congratulations, Ruth. Congratulations, Ruth. You've earned it. Um, oh. You're a superstar now. Yes, uh, indeed. <laughs> use, use your newfound fame. <laughs> well. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move over now to uh, take more pictures um, with the family and with friends, of course. And then from there, um, it's back to regular programming, non hard facts. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. This has been the Tournament of Champions on I Beg to Differ. And uh, you're listening to Nigeria Info 99.3. Don't go away. Champion. It's a title that can only be earned, never given. It's a title that everyone wants, but only the best can claim. And I want to assume that you would run because I want to give the listeners context for the conversation. In 2019, you were running late to um, Atiku Abubakar. What did you learn then that you will not repeat? 
this time. Yes, when is the president coming out to address us? There's a few things. One, I have a burden and a passion for young people. The fact that you have elected a man does not mean then you begin to order him around. The president will do whatever is good for the country at any given time. Mr. Adeshino, isn't the president responsible to the people? What should the next president do to root out stakeholders who are complicit? You fire those. Those that need to be fired are fired. It's looking like a brand new Chelsea attacking with so much fluidity. And what can you say about that, Martin? I know you follow Chelsea quite closely. I live close to the Chelsea training ground. That's what you mean by that. I'm not <laughs> sure.